Artsy is the company that made tonight's documentary, The Art Spirit. In our studio, we have Frank Weiss, video producer, and Bill Horn, executive director of Artsy. How are you? I'm great. Hey, how you doing? Good. Bill, what is Artsy? How did it start? We started first as a magazine, Artbeat, in 2000, and then we morphed into Envision magazine, and then we decided we we're going to do an online magazine. But we noticed that there was a real need to promote the arts of South Jersey. It just wasn't getting the recognition that we thought it deserved. So instead of just doing a magazine, we started promoting arts in all different ways, including video, photography, graphic design, anything we could do to make the arts of South Jersey more visible. Mm. How did you and Frank meet? I went to a film festival, and Frank had submitted a student film. He was with Stockton at the time. And I was impressed with the quality of the work. And he was there, and I went up to him afterward, and I said, by the way, do you do any freelance work? I'm with Artsy. Would you be interested in working with us? And he looked at me and said, okay, and he followed up. You know, I got a call a day later, like Frank does. He follows up with everything. We met, we hit it off, and we started working together probably within a couple of weeks after that. That's great. And what, what brought you to this, the Pat Witt's studio? How did you get involved in that subject? Bill was more familiar being originally from the Millville area, more familiar with Pat's work. Bill introduced me to her. Um, she has this infectious spirit, you know. So I was immediately interested, and the idea to do a short video on her grew into a much larger film, um, which you guys just saw. And it, it couldn't have been a more pleasing project to work on. Uh, I love working with children and teaching them about art as well. And, you know, Bill felt that she was an important enough person to focus on, and I strongly agree. And we're very glad we did it. We didn't expect it to become a documentary as opposed to one of our normal three to four minute shorts. Hmm. You know, we didn't think there'd be enough material to work with, and it turned out we could have done an hour easily. Hmm. There was just so much to tell, and she's just such an interesting person. There just was no way to tell her story in three to four minutes. Hmm. She had so much depth to her. And we've said from day one, Pat doesn't teach art, she teaches life. And in order to capture that, we just needed more time. And we just liked spending time with her. To be honest with you, it was just so much fun to go to the barn and spend time with Pat and her staff and the students and get to know her and them. And we just had a great time doing it. Yeah, she seems a great character. Oh, she is. Yeah. Great. So it's been a year, Frank. Uh, when the road is coming was here and we last talked. Sure, yeah. And you've been making films, you've been working. What's the last year been like? What have you been working on? Extremely busy. I finished my last year of college, um, so I'm free and clear, and my mind is focused on all the other things that there can be done. Um, but simultaneously, as I was, I was, I was, as I was completing my degree, I've um, been working on films as well. So I just finished a big documentary called Finding Home on the Atlantic City homeless population. Um, which I expect to be released to festivals very soon. You did that um, on your own? Yeah, I was approached by the Noise Museum of Art to do a short feature about an oil painter from San Antonio named Seth Cam, focusing on the homeless uh, Atlantic City. And uh, after meeting him and seeing the obvious, obvious huge topic that homelessness is in our country, I felt it was extremely important to kind of put that out there, the stories of the homeless, and, and disprove the myths out there that kind of exist. And uh, I love the film. And I How did you do that, though? Did you, stay with, did you live with him for a while? Were you um, Seth stayed at the mission, the Atlantic City Rescue Mission, for quite some time. I was there on and off um, almost every day for a period of over a month. Seth went out and found people that were, had compelling stories to tell. And after doing interviews with them, there was a potential to do a huge length film. And we really had to eliminate a lot of uh, their story, but it's so heart-wrenching to hear what they've gone through. Did you finance these things yourself? Absolutely, we do. We, we seek grantees. Who's we? Um, well, Bill and I will, will go out and, and find people to potentially give grants. Um, the Dodge Foundation is a supporter um, for some of our projects, for some of my projects as well. Um, and, uh, but most of them is, comes, from, comes from our willingness to do them and, and our passion for the arts as well. So. Where do you normally distribute your shorts? Who, who sees your shorts? Film festivals? Or? We do them on our website. So we have a website, artsynow.com where we place the videos and people get to see them and then we promote them that way. So that's the majority of where our videos have gone so far, but we also do commercial videos for other companies and you know, different projects like that also. Mostly geared towards the arts though. That's great. It's lo very local in South Jersey, but that is expanding quickly. Yeah. And um, we'll be entering more festivals. But come. what happened with the art spirit, we premiered it at the Levoy Theater in Millville. Mm. And despite tornado warnings, we yeah. had a huge, yeah, there was tornado warning. Everything in Milva was shut down that night, and they said, we're still going to do this, and we had a great turnout. 
Okay. And the tornadoes never hit. That's great. I, there's a great hunger, I think, for good film, good documentary films. Well, it got a great response. We were in, when Pat walked in, it was like tears in my eyes, because she came in last. She was upstairs talking to people, and everybody in the audience stood up and started clapping. That's great. And she wasn't expecting that. That's you know, great. To look yeah. at her and to listen to the people clapping, it was like, oh my god. That's great. That was like you couldn't ask for anything better. Yeah, that's fabulous. Tell us a little about your writer and narrator, Sterling Brown. How'd you choose him? Well, Bill has worked with Sterling on quite a number of projects, and I love his, his writing style and his uh, narrative abilities. So I thought he was a perfect fit, and Bill agreed. Um, but we're familiar with his work from before, and thought he was a good choice for this. And he was one of the writers for Envision Magazine. When I did the magazine, he was one of our top writers. But we had never used him as a voiceover before, and it turns out he's got a great voice for this kind of work. That's great. So not only did he write it, he was also the voiceover, which was a plus for us. So do you see more collaborations? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, you going to continue working together? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm very passionate about doing work with artists and um, promoting, like Bill said, the f mission of RCD to promote the arts of South Jersey. Um, the potential for projects keeps growing. We're making great connections with the town of Hamilton, which mm. we believe is a great hotspot for cultural activity, and mm. maybe doing a documentary on the town as well. Um, so That's great. Yeah. Well, good luck in the future. Thanks, John. It was a Thank you, John, very much. To watch past NJ Doc shows and find out how to submit your film, go to www.njtvonline.org slash njdocs. Tweet your comments about tonight's film using the hashtag njdocs, and connect with us at NJTV Online on Twitter and Facebook.